Greetings and welcome to week six. This week I want to talk a little bit about uh, the medical assistant's uh, role in uh, minor surgeries. What are, you know some of the procedures? What what do they do? Where they do it? I've also loaded uploaded two uh, uh, other videos for you to view. Uh, in, uh, to be included with this lecture video. So, uh, where would an assistant, a medical assistant, uh, uh, be involved in minor surgical procedures? Well, we work in ambulatory care settings, we work in office practices, uh, you know, we clinics. Uh, areas like that, you might be doing minor minor surgeries. We assist the physician during the procedures uh, sometimes. Uh, so patient care uh, <coughs> is uh, really important. So uh, what we want to do is follow the uh, procedures. So uh, what is the medical assistant's role in minor surgery? Well, it's administrative. Uh, we complete insurance forms, obtain, <clears throat> obtain signed in uh, form consent, uh, patient education, explaining the procedure, uh, answering questions from the patient, giving pre-surgical instructions, uh, which are relative uh, to the procedure. Uh, we prepare the surgical room, we uh, get the equipment set up, we assist during the procedure. Uh, it can be unsterile or sterile. <coughs> we have to make sure that it's a sterile field. Uh, we ensure the safety and comfort of the patient. We give preoperative, uh, we do the preoperative procedures, uh, the patient care, dress wounds, uh, patient education, uh, we give wound care, uh, we clean the room for the next procedure. Uh, now, what are the medical assistant's responsibilities in relation to patient education and uh, minor surgical procedures? Well, the medical assistant uh, may be responsible for providing patient education concerning uh, the explanation of the procedure, pre-surgical uh, 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 instructions, post-surgical instructions, wound care. In a physician's office, uh, we do minor surgical procedures. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, it's safely performed in the office without general anesthetic, can be. Uh, make sure, you know, uh, or we can use local anesthetics which affect only a particular area. And obviously, when you're talking about anesthesia, the doctor is going to perform this. The reasons we might do this is to help diagnose illnesses uh, such as taking biopsies, uh, repair of an injury, removal of small growths, or even cosmetic surgery, uh, such as mole removals, uh, removing small discolored areas of skin. Uh, now, this is done mostly if the mole changes size, uh, shape, or size, or color, because we want to send that off, obviously, to the uh, biopsy. Uh, we can drain an abscess in an office. That's a minor surgical procedure. Uh, an abscess, of course, is a collection of pus formed due to an infection. As I said, obtaining a biopsy, which is removal of a small amount of skin for examination, uh, and we place these in 10% formalin, which is a common preservative. Uh, we uh, take care of things like accidental uh, lacerations, uh, puncture wounds, uh, intentional wounds, 
Uh, we clean non-surgical wounds, wash them with soap and water, irrigate with uh, a sterile solution. We may debride the area, which is removal of debris or dead tissue. Uh, in wound care, uh, care uh, we work through the inflammatory phase, which is where the vessels are, are constricted, which reduces bleeding. Uh, and then we have the, of course, platelets and clotting factors and, and white blood uh, cells, which seal the wounds, clot the blood, and remove the bacteria. Uh, there's a proliferation phase, which is when the new tissue forms, uh, closing off the wound. Uh, this phase can be sped up by if the edges of the wound are uh, approximated or, you know, more, more evenly. And then, of course, there's a maturation phase, which is the formation of the scar tissue. Uh, we might uh, close a wound uh, using butterfly closures or sterile strips, uh, skin adhesive, sutures, uh, absorbable, uh, which are collagen fibers, and non-absorbable, which are silk, nylon, polyester and sometimes uh, uh, we might use staples uh, the you can um, you know uh, set uh, set things up for the doctor like if the doctor's doing a little laser surgery uh, to cut away some tissue uh, and uh, not destroy the surrounding tissue as much uh, electro uh, cauterization, uh, cryosurgery, you know, that's, uh, they do cryosurgery to remove things like uh, warts. We are not necessarily involved in all of this as, as far as the hands on all the time, but we do do all the paperwork, all the administrative work. Let's. Uh, uh, test some knowledge here. Let's say you have a 65 year old female who has a wound on her left calf that is healing poorly. Now when you review the chart, what conditions do you look for that might uh, would indicate the reason uh, for that poor healing? Well, age, Poor nutrition, uh, poor circulation, you know, high stress levels, uh, diabetes, uh, a weakened uh, immune system, obesity, smoking. Those are what we would look for that might tell us why she's not healing uh, as quickly as she should. Okay, now let's talk about some instruments that are used in. Uh, uh, minor surgery. When we are uh, doing cutting and dissecting, uh, we use instruments like the scalpels, the scissors, and curettes. Grasping and uh, clamping, we would use forceps, hemostats, and towel clamps. Uh, retracting, dilating, and probing instruments would be, you know, retractors obviously, dilators, and probes. Uh, and then, of course, you would have the suturing instruments. You'd have the needles, the needle holders, and the package sutures. Uh, so syringes and needles inject anesthetic solutions. They withdraw fluids. They obtain needle biopsy specimens. Uh, they're in instrument uh, trays and packs. Uh, we also have laceration repair trays, incision and drainage trays, uh, foreign body and growth removal trays, uh, onychiectomy or nail removal trays, uh, vasectomy trays, suture and staple removal trays. Uh, we have all those and 
obviously we have to make sure of a sepsis. This is a big priority uh, during uh, surgical procedures. It's critical to the health and safety of the patient. Uh, you have levels. You have med medical, which is clean technique, and you have surgical, which is sterile technique. Uh, you have to have sharps and uh, biohazardous waste handling and disposal, puncture and leak resistant containers, biohazard uh, symbol on uh, everything. Now, medical asepsis reduces the number of microorganisms and prevents the spread of disease. Uh, hand washing, personal protective equipment. Uh, these provide uh, barriers between the wearer and the infectious or hazardous materials. These are gloves, masks, gowns. Then we have surgical asepsis. Uh, it eliminates all microorganisms. Common procedures uh, using sterile technique, uh, creating a sterile field. Uh, this is used as a working area during the procedure and it's kept above waste level. Uh, adding sterile uh, items to a sterile field. The outer one inch is contaminated. Instruments and supplies and pouring solutions are all uh, centered around, um, are centered in. Um, you perform a surgical scrub. This removes more microorganisms than hand washing. Uh, two to six minutes. Uh, uh, put on sterile gloves and sanitize, disinfect, and sterilize the equipment. Now, you have a lot of preoperative procedures. You know, you, you, uh, uh, have your preliminary duties like uh, talking about the procedure to the patient, dietary and fluid restrictions, and the fact that they should bring someone to drive them home. The administrative and legal tasks, you, you have to get assigned informed consent uh, or assigned consent, uh, assigned informed consent uh, sheet. Uh, you talk to the patient about uh, the procedure and you communicate with them to ease their fears. You prepare the surgical room. In other words, the equipment, the supplies, you check the date and sterilization indicators. Uh, you make sure it's neat, clean, free of waste, and has adequate lighting. Uh, you prepare the patient. Uh, you take vital signs, medication orders. Uh, gown and position the patient, uh, do surgical skin prep, which is clean the area, remove hair from the area, and apply antiseptic. Uh, you do a, a lot of these things, and sometimes you may uh, help with the surgery itself. Uh, and then, of course, you would do uh, your post-operative procedures, which are uh, immediate patient care, that's top priority. Uh, you would administer medications as directed. You'd monitor the vital signs. Watch for any adverse uh, reactions. Uh, keep the patient lying down for a prescribed period of time. Uh, document all your observations on the patient's chart. Uh, dress the wound. Uh, these are post-operative, uh, 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 so you use sterile material to cover the incision, and the purpose of this is to keep it clean, it reduces bleeding, uh, absorbs fluid drainage, uh, it reduces discomfort to the patient, it will speed the healing up, and it reduces the possibility of scarring. Then you bandage, which is a clean strip of gauze or elastic material. This holds the dressing in place. It could improve the circulation, uh, provides support or reduces tension on the wound. Uh, it prevents the wound from reopening and prevents the movement of the area of the body. Uh, 
so as you can see we do a lot and that's that's just touching uh, on the area uh, so I'm going to summarize really quickly to uh, um, go over what we've we've talked about <coughs> excuse me so in summary uh, several specific surgical procedures are performed in office settings. They include laser surgery, cryosurgery, and electrocauterization. Uh, various categories of instruments are used in minor surgery. Uh, cutting and dissecting, grasping and clamping, retracting, dilating, probing, uh, suturing, injecting, withdrawal of fluids, and obtaining specimens. Um, medical asepsis involves uh, reducing the number of microorganisms to prevent the spread of disease. The uh, goal of the surgical asepsis is to eliminate all microorganisms. Medical assistance uh, uh, preoperative duties include providing uh, preoperative instructions to the patient, uh, ensuring that all necessary paperwork is completed, easing the patient's fears, and preparing the surgical room. The uh, medical assistant's role in preparing the patient for surgery includes determining where, whether the patient has followed the pre-surgical instructions, obtaining the uh, patient's vital signs, checking uh, medication orders, gowning and positioning the patient and preparing the patient's skin for surgery. Um, local anesthetics are used during most minor surgical procedures and may be either injected uh, or applied topically. The uh, medical assistant will prepare the anesthetic so that the physician can administer it. Uh, medical assistants may serve in one of two capacities during surgical procedure. One is as an unsterile assistant known as a floater and the other is a sterile assistant. The uh, medical assistant's preoperative duties include giving immediate patient care, dressing and bandaging the wound, giving preoperative instructions, assisting uh, with the patient's release, and then cleaning the surgical room. Uh, a wise person named Sophocles once said, a wise doctor does not mutter incantations over a sore that needs the knife. Uh, I just added that there at the end because I thought it was really, it was a really neat uh, saying. And as you can see, the, the medical assistant, we have a lot of duties when it comes to uh, surgery. Uh, So make sure that you, you watch the videos that I posted for you uh, and uh, really study up on this because it, to me the surgery part of our job is the most interesting. All right. Um, it's been a pleasure for uh, lecturing this week and I look forward to hearing uh, your posts, reading your posts and uh, if you have any problems. Contact me and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Thank you and have a great day.